For the first example, let's consider a single particle, free particle in a one-dimensional box. So uh, we have the single free particle. This is a problem we have considered before. It has a mass m, box length l. Uh, it is one dimensional box and remember we solved Schrodinger's equation to find that the wave function was given by standing wave solutions a sine kx where the wave function has to vanish at the boundaries because the probability distribution function absolute phi square must be equal to zero at the boundaries the particle cannot penetrate the box and this implied that kl is equal to an integer times pi k must be n pi over l it's quantized uh, the corresponding energy is p squared over 2m it is h bar squared k squared over uh, 2m and uh, if you substitute for k is equal to n pi over l you get the energy levels of the system uh, h bar squared over 2m n squared pi squared over l squared and we can write this uh, as h bar squared pi squared over 2m L squared multiplied by n squared where the quantum number n quantum number n can take values starting from 1 to 3 to infinity for uh, different energy levels and remember we cannot set n equals 0 that would imply the particle does not exist so if I look at the possible values the quantum number n can have for energies less than uh, epsilon. So I'm trying to calculate phi of epsilon, the total number of values n can have for energies less than epsilon. Well, in order to calculate this, I'm basically going to uh, look at uh, this energy uh, relationship square root of energy is h bar pi over uh, l square root 2m multiplied by n so that the n quantum number is related to energy as square root 2m e l over pi h bar so for energies less than e and can take values starting from 1 to 3 up to square root 2me multiplied by l divided by pi h bar uh, so that my lowercase phi for energy epsilon will be equal to this uh, maximum n value that I calculated at the energy epsilon square root 2m epsilon multiplied by l divided by pi h bar and recall that I have only one quantum number, number of degrees of freedom is 1. Okay, uh, so what is the total number of states uh, for energies less than E? And remember, this is uh, basically phi of epsilon to the power f, where f is 1 here, so an epsilon is E, so for phi of e so in this case basically i will have phi of e is equal to just uh, the contribution at energy e from one quantum number which is square root 2 m e divided by pi h bar uh, multiplied by l okay and the, if you consider this relationship, the contribution to energy is f times epsilon minus epsilon zero. Since f is one here, e minus e zero is going to be equal to epsilon minus epsilon zero. 
So it is epsilon is equal to E in this case. So the density of states rho of E is d phi dE. So I can take the derivative. So I will have L over pi h bar uh, multiplied by square root 2m. That's the constant. Then the derivative of uh, square root of energy. So what is the density of states here then? Um, it's going to be L over 2 pi h bar square root 2m e to the power minus 1 half. Then I can find the number of accessible states in the energy interval uh, e to e plus delta e to be uh, square root 2 L over 2 pi h bar square root 2 m uh, energy to the power minus 1 over 2 times delta E. So I have calculated the density of states uh, for this single free particle in the one dimensional box and the number of accessible states for energy range E to E plus delta E is here. Uh, so there's one more relationship I want to check the natural logarithm of omega uh, scales as f. Uh, so this was what we have seen uh, in, uh, at the end of, of our discussion. Well, and this is going to be true for f very large, remember. So uh, in this case, f is not very large. F uh, this is not valid. It's, going, it's not going to be valid because f is equal to 1 here. So this, this will imply for f equals 1, you will have uh, ln omega not scaling with f because f has to be very large for that relationship to hold and for it to be independent of the energy interval delta e. So this is an important point to note here. Basically, what we have found out in this case is that uh, you have uh, for uh, a one-dimensional box, a single free particle, the density of states scales with energy as, a, as e to the power minus one half. Actually, if you try this for two-dimensional box, you will get uh, no energy dependence e to zero and for three dimensional it will be e to the power plus one half you can try this for yourself and the corresponding number of accessible states for energy interval e to e plus a small microscopically small energy delta e interval delta e is the density of states we have calculated multiplied by delta e